Okay, everyone, this is Justin Williams Savoy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Okay, guys, well, I'm taking a look at another book by John M. Frame, Systematic Theology and Introduction to Christian Belief, John M. Frame, forward by J.I. Packer. Wonderfully clear, refreshing, insightful, profoundly biblical, and outstanding achievement, Wayne Grundem. So, I purchased this book some time ago, but things took place in my life that really prevented me from uh, diving deep into it. So now I'm going to go ahead and take a look. Um, a biblical, clear, cog cog cogent, accessible, comprehensive, and practical summary of Christian belief by one of the most important and original American theologians of the last hundred years. Few in our days champion a vision of God as massive, magnificent, and biblical as John Frames. For decades he has given himself to the church, to his students, to, and to meticulous thinking and to rigorous study of the Bible. He has winsomely, patiently, and persuasively contended for the gospel in the secular philosophical arena as well as in the thick of the church worship wars and wrestlings with feminism and open theism. He brings together a rare blend of big picture thinking, level-headed reflection, biblical fidelity, a love for the gospel and for the church and the ability to write with care and clarity. John Piper, counselor at Bethlehem College Seminary founder and teacher, www.desiringgod.org. So systematic theology, these review, this right here, these quotes, systematic theology, a worthy climax of the life's work of one who has only sought to be a faithful servant of Christ, teaching in his church. It is a privilege to celebrate the appearing and to commend its serious study. I guarantee that the dividends of such study will be un uniformly high. Thank you, John Frame, for this superb gift. J.I. Packer, Board Governor's Professor of Theology at Regent College. Oh, I was just going to say, this is the same quote that's on the back of the philosophy book um, that I had previously done a little short um, video about. This new systematic theology comes from one of the greatest theological minds of our age. John's frames, contributions to theology are already massive and many. But now he has given the church a systematic theology. This is a very important book, and it represents a lifetime of consecrated theological reflection. This new volume promises to be an enduring contribution to evangelical theology. R. Albert Mulher, Jr., President of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. John Frame is one of my favorite theologians, and his systematic theology is filled with the deep learning and warranted wisdom of a lifetime. I commend it warmly to the Lord's people everywhere. Timothy George, founding dean, Beacon Divinity School of Samford University, general editor, Reformation Commentary on Scripture. Let's see if I can get a clear shot of this ISBN. There it is. And here is the webpage, www.prpbooks.com. So... <clears throat> Let me get my knife out here and we'll crack this open. One handed. <laughs> I'm still doing these videos with the camera, but I'm going to be upgrading computer and camera equipment very soon. It's just been a matter of trying to find the right stuff and um, that fits the budget. And a lot of other things going on. So I do uh, prioritize providing content for this channel for you guys. And intend to keep it going. So bear with me on all of that. So here is more. Systematic Theology is a culmination and created synthesis of John Frame's writing on teaching about and studying of the Word of God. This magisterial opus, at once biblical, clear, cognate, readable, accessible, and practical, summarizes the mature thought of one of the most and original Reformed theologians of the last 100 years. It will enable you to see clearly how the Bible explains God's great sweeping plan for mankind. John M. Frame's systematic theology is a remarkable achievement. It is simultaneously scholarly, yet accessible insight, steeped in historic orthodoxy, yet fresh in reflection. Peter A. Lillebach. President of Westminster Theological Seminary.
The biblical and practical nature of this perspective makes this a refreshing and much-needed resource for all of us who care about the vital reform theology. Richard J. Mao, President, Fuller Theological Seminary. Frame has produced what should become required reading in seminary classrooms and pastors studied studies for years. Mark Young, President, Denver Seminary. Clear, thorough, intelligent, and fair to opposing views. John Frame's work will now be the standard within traditional reform theology. Cornelius, Cornelius Plantinga, Jr., President Emeritus Calvin Theological Seminary, Senior Research Fellow, Calvin Institute of Christian Worship, Grand Rapids. There's John M. Frame. John M. Frame, A.B. Princeton University, B.D. Westminster Theological Seminary, M.A. and M. Phil, Yale University, D.D. Bellhaven College, holds the J.D. Trimble Chair of Systematic Theology and Philosophy at Reformed Theological Seminary in Orlando, and is the author of many books, including the four-volume Theology of Lordship series. It is a special joy to see this, the quintessence of a lifetime of framed study of God's Word. Walter C. Kaser, Jr., President Emeritus, Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. This major work maintains Frame's reputation for impeccable scholarship on the one hand and eminent practicality on the other. Eugene H. Merle, Distinguished Professor of Old Testament Studies, Dallas Theological Seminary. Here at last is John Frame's magnus, magnum opus. Few other contemporary theologians have influenced me as much as Dr. Frame, Justin Taylor, blogger between two worlds. Frame is a deep thinker and a clear communicator and a rare combination among theologians of his stature. J.D. Greer, lead pastor, the Summit Church, Rayleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Seems like these books have quite a few more of those kind of things, just like the Western philosophy version that there was. I mean, look at this. Like, that's a lot of paper. Okay, Systematic Theology. Systematic Theology and Introduction to Christian Belief, John M. Frame. To the next generation, Adam, Amanda, Gavin, Christina, Melina, Olivia, Rebecca, and those yet unborn, and to Carol. Contents, analytical outline, forward by J.I. Packer, preference, abbreviations. Part 1, introduction to systematic theology, what is theology? Two, the Lord. Three, God's lordship and unique worldview. Part 2, the biblical story, the Lord's covenants. Five, the kingdom of God. Six, the family of God. Part 3, the doctrine of God. The Acts of the Lord Miracle, 8, The Acts of the Lord Providence, Part 1, 9, The Acts of the Lord Providence, Part 2, 10, The Acts of the Lord Creation, 11, The Acts of the Lord God's Decrees, 12, God's Attributes, Love and Goodness, 13, God's Attributes, Righteousness and Holiness, 14, The Problem of Evil, 15, God's Attributes, Knowledge, 16, God's Attributes, Power and Will, 17, God's attributes, Lord of time. 18, God's attributes, Lord of space, matter, light, and breath. 19, God's attributes, the self-contained God. 20, God, three and one. 21, the three are God. 22, Father, Son, and Spirit. Part four, the doctrine of the word of God. God and his word. God speaks to us in events and words. God's written word. The nature of scripture, 27, from God's lips to our ears, 28, from the text to our hearts, part 5, the doctrine of the knowledge of God, 29, God in our knowledge, 30, perspectives on human knowledge, 31, justifying claims to knowledge, 32, resources for knowing, part 6, the doctrine of the angels and demons, 33, angels and demons, part 7, the doctrine of man, 34, Man in the image of God, 35, human responsibility and freedom, 36, sin, part 8, the doctrine of Christ, 37, the person of Christ, 38, the works of Christ, part 9, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, 39, the Holy Spirit, 40, calling, 41, regeneration and conversion, subjective salvation, 42, justification and adoption, 43, sanctification, 44, 
Perseverance and Assurance, 45 Glorification, Part 10, The Doctrine of the Church, The Church, The Task of the Church, The Means of Grace, 49, The Sacraments, Part 11, The Doctrine of Last Things, Heaven and Hell, 51, The Events of the Last Days, Part 12, The Doctrine of Christian Life, How Then Shall We Live, Appendix A, Triads, Appendix B, Glossary, Bibliography, Index of Scripture, Index of Subjects and Names, Analytical Outline. Part 1, Introduction to Systematic Theology. 1. What is theology? A. Short and long definitions. B. Theology as application. C. Kinds of theology. D. Theological method. 2. The Lord. The centrality of divine lordship. B. Opponents of the lordship theology. C. The covenant. D. Control. E. Authority. F. Presence. G. Perspectives on our covenant lord. H. Lordship and knowledge. 3. God's Lordship and Unique World View A. The Lord is Absolute B. The Lord is Tripersonal C. The Lord is Transcendent D. The Lord is Eminent Relations between Transcendence and Eminence F. Epistemological Perils G. The Lord is Creator H. Conclusion Part 2. The Biblical Story The Lord's Covenants A. Genres of Biblical Literature B. Narrative and World View C. The Eternal Covenant of Redemption Analytical outline, the universal covenant, the Edenic covenant, the covenant of grace, God's covenant with Noah, God's covenant with Abraham, God's covenant with Israel under Moses, God's covenant with David, the new creation, covenants and perspectives, living in God's covenant, the kingdom of God, the two ages, God the king, Christ the king, the gospel of the kingdom, law and gospel, one kingdom or two, life in the kingdom, the family of God, the fatherhood of God, father and mother, Question mark. What would a female God be like? 2. Feminine images of God in Scripture. 3. Theological importance of masculine imagery. C. Living in God's family. Part 3. The doctrine of God, the acts of the Lord. Miracle. Defining miracle. Miracle and natural law. Immediacy. Attestation of prophecy. A more biblical definition. Have miracles ceased? Miracles and apologetics. Are miracles possible? The sufficient evidence for believing in biblical miracles? Question mark. Are miracles evident and evidence for the Christian faith? The Acts of the Lord, Providence, Part 1, Providence and Miracle, Providence and God's Control, Ephesus, Universality, the Natural World, Human History, Individual Human Life, Human Decisions, Sins, Faith and Salvation, Summary of Passages, The Acts of the Lord, Providence, Part 2, Government, Preservation, Re Revelation, Concurrence, The Acts of the Lord, Creation, Defining Creation, Creation of Worship, Creation, and Lord, God's Lordship, creation and redemption, creation out of nothing, six days, the age of earth, evolution, the acts of the Lord, God's decrees, God's plan, the decrees of God's Lordship, historical election, eternal election, reprobation, the order of decrees, God's attributes, love and goodness, goodness, love, the language of love, the extent of God's love. God's saving love, God's love and his lordship, grace, common grace and God's patience, covenant love, compassion, other forms of God's goodness, God's attributes, righteousness and holiness, God's righteous deeds, God's jealousy, God's hatred, God's wrath, God's holiness, the problem of evil, the nature of evil, some good things about evil, evil and God's agency, God's attributes, knowledge, God's knowledge, God's knowledge of his lordship, omniscience, God's knowledge of the future, God's knowledge of the future of general, God's foreknowledge of of free human decisions and actions, passages alleged to teach divine ignorance, God's knowledge of possibilities, God's knowledge of contingencies, middle knowledge, God's wisdom, God's mind, God's attributes, power, will, God's omnipotence, what God can't do, definitions of omnipotence, omnipotence and redemption, power and weakness, God's will, decree and precept, how does God desire the salvation of all? Does God desire the salvation of all, which is the real will of God, a third will, God's attributes, Lord of time, God's infinity, God's eternity, scripture on God and time, God's temporal omnipresence, God's unchangeability, a God who relents. How is God unchanging, unchangeability and temporal omnipresence, some modern views, process theology, futurism, God's attributes, Lord of space, matter, light, and breath, God's Immensity, explicit scripture texts, an ethical focus, biblical personalism, lordship and space, God's spatial omnipresence, God's incorporeality, theophany and incarnation, God's invisibility, God's glory, the glory, God, the glory, theophany.
glory as God's presence, God's glory in creation, God's reputation, glory, and the Trinity, God's spirituality, power, authority, presence, and blessing, and judgment, the spirit of redemptive history, God's attributes, the self-contained God, God's aseity, and how does God, does God have feelings? Can God suffer? God, three in one, Trinitarian basics, God is one, God and the gods, contemporary critiques on monotheism, God is simple, God is three, plurals, Hypostas hypostasiations, divine persons in the Old Testament, tribes in the Old Testament, Old Testament tribes and divine beings, the divine persons in the New Testament, the three are God, taking Jesus' deity for granted, Christ the covenant Lord, Christ the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, Jesus Christ is God, John 1.1, 1, 1, John 1.18, 1, John 20.18, 20, Acts 20.28, 20, Romans 9.5, Second Thessalonians 1.12, Titus 2.13, 2 Peter 1.1, uh, 1, 1 Timothy 3.15 and 16, Hebrews 1 8, 1 John 5 20, Philippians 2 6, Colossians 2 9, Epilogue, other titles of Christ, other evidence for Jesus' deity, the deity of the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Spirit, the distinctness of persons, the distinct personality of the Spirit. Sir, uh, sir Comenia Sessio, mutual glorification, substance and persons, ontological and economic, eternal generation, eternal precision, philoke, philoke. Um, subordination, Trinitarian models, Trinitarian analog analogies, philosophical analogies, the Trinity and the Lordship of God. Part 4, the doctrine of the Word of God. God's speech, God's truth, God's word to us, controlling power, meaningful authority, personal presence. God speaks to us in events and words, revelation through events, nature and general history, redemptive history, revelation through words, the divine voice, revelation through the words, prophets and apostles, Jesus, divine voice and prophet, God's written word, the preeminence of God's written word, God's written word and the Old Testament, the generations, the covenant document, written prophecy, wisdom, respect for God's written word in the Old Testament, Jesus' view of the Old Testament, the apostles' view of the Old Testament, the New Testament is God's written word, the canon of scripture. The nature of scripture, inspiration, and inerrancy, infallibility, definitions, biblical basis, inerrancy and precision, qualifications of inerrancy, phenomena and purpose, clarity, clarity of God's control, clarity of God's authority, clarity of God's presence, necessity, comprehensiveness, sufficiency, confessional formulation, biblical basis, general and particular Sufficiency, challenges of sufficiency of scripture from God's lips to our ears, copying, co copying the textual criticism, what is an autograph, is the limitation scriptural, but don't biblical writers quote copies as God's word, is the limitation uh, and an apologetic dodge, does the limitation make inerrancy a dead letter, why did God allow the autographs to be lost, why did God not give us perfect copies, isn't any loss a serious loss? Translations and additions, preaching, teaching, preaching, and theology, sacraments, confessions, creeds, and traditions, human reception, interpretation from the text to our hearts, assurance, personal person, revelation, the divine witness, theophany, Christ, the mediator of all revelation, the work of the Holy Spirit, epistemology, and the Spirit's witness, the spirit and the sufficiency of scriptures, human beings as revelation, writing on the heart, the name of the Lord, heart revelation, general, special, and existential revelation. Part 5, the doctrine of the knowledge of God. God in our knowledge, God's knowledge and man's, our knowledge of God, God's knowability and incomprehensibility, knowing God and faith and unbelief, knowledge and obedience, knowledge and disobedience, perspectives of human knowledge, objects of human knowledge, divine revelation, the world, ourselves, epistemological, logical perspectives, foundations and found foundationalism, theories of truth, justifying claims of knowledge, normative justification, situational justification, existential justification, knowledge, regeneration, and sanctification, seeing things in biblical patterns, a corporate existential perspective, knowledge, resources for knowing, the personalization of the knowledge of God, the heart, reason. Perception, experience, emotion, emotions and decisions, emotions and knowledge, emotion as perspective, emotion as theology, cultivating godly emotions, imagination, will, habit, skills, 
Intuition, Part 6, The Doctrine of Angels and Demons. Angels and Demons, Nature and the Work of Angels, Angels and Men, Satan and Demons, Living with the Angels, A Sermon. Part 7, The Doctrine of Man, Man in the Image of God, The Image of God, Control, Kingly Office, Authority, Prophetic Office, Presence, Priestly Office. Man is God's son, male and female, both men and women are made in God's image. Men and women are equally in the image of God. Sexual dif differentiation itself, image is God, men and women equally represent God. Summary, body, soul, and spirit, dichotomy and trichotomy, creation and traducianism, tra 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 the creation of Adam and Eve, the historicity of Adam and Eve, human responsibility and freedom, responsibility and accountability, responsibility as liability, responsibility and ability, excursus on ability, freedom, critique of Libertarianism, uh, creaturely otherness, integrity and significance, divine and human creativity, models of divine and human agency, sin, man's original goodness, the nature of sin, the origin of sin, God's response to the fall, the effects of the fall, guilt, punishment, corruption, temptation, and sin. Are believers totally depraved? Part 8, the doctrine of Christ, the person of Christ, Christ-centeredness, the deity of Christ, the humanity of Christ, the incarnation. Jesus' virginal conception, the hypostatic union, living with the two natures, communication of attributes, Christ is the image of God, control, kingly office, authority, prophetic office, presence, priestly office, the work of Christ, Jesus' offices, prophet, priest, for whom did Christ die, intercession and king, the states of Christ, union with Christ, election, adoption, redemption. Part 9, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit? What does the Spirit do? The Spirit in the lives of believers, baptism in the Spirit, filling of the Spirit, fruits of the Spirit, gifts of the Spirit, miracles, prophecy, tongues, healings, callings, the ordo salutis, uh, perspectives in the application of redemption, effectual calling, applications of God's call, regeneration and conversion, subjective salvation, regeneration, regeneration of the Old Testament, just the Johenian teaching, Paul on regeneration, a second meaning of regeneration, regenerate infants, faith, definition of the saving faith, saving faith is a gift of God, faith in the good works, the role of faith in salvation, faith in the Christian life, faith, hope and love, the necessity of faith, Repentance, repentance and salvation, repentance in the Christian life, justification and adoption, righteousness, the nature of justification, a legal de declaration, the constitutive declaration, the ground of justification, the instrument of justification, justification and sanctification, recent controversy over justification, the new perspectives on Paul, Norman Shepherd, adoption, relation to the adoption of other doctrines, regeneration, faith, justification, privileges of adoption, sanctification, holiness. Definition of sanctification, definition of sanctification, progressive sanctification, means of sanctification, God's law, the history of redemption, our personal resources, spiritual exercises, and simple obedience, perseverance and assurance, perseverance, assurance, and salvation, grounds of assurance, glorification, present glorification, future glorification, partaking in the divine nature, glory with God and with Christ. Part 10, the doctrine of the church, the church, the Old Testament background, the nature of the church, visible, invisible, local, regional, universal images, attributes, marks, church government, the task of the church, the church and the kingdom, God's mandates for the church, specific tasks, ministries, and God, the church, the means of grace, the idea of the means of grace, the word, fellowship, prayer, the sacraments, baptism, the mode of baptism, infant baptism, the Lord's Supper, table, fellowship with God, the experience of the Lord's Supper, Part 11, the doctrine of the last things, heaven and hell, the intermediate state, the eternal state, eternal blessing of believers, heaven, eternal punishment of unbelievers, hell, the events of the last days, amillennialism and postmillennialism, premillennialism, arguments for amillennialism, arguments for postmillennialism, arguments for premillennialism, Preacherism, the already and the not yet, eschatology of the Christian life, part 12, the doctrine of the Christian life, how then shall we live, lordships and ethics, how God governs our ethical life, necessary and sufficient criteria for good works, biblical reason to do good works, the history of redemption, the authority of God's commands, the presence of the Spirit, the types of Christian ethics, what really matters, factors and ethical judgments, perspectives on discipline and ethics, interdependence and perspectives, the ethical life, and the Lord's commands. And then we go into the forward. So that is Systematic Theology and Introduction to Christian Belief. John M. Frame. I've been meaning to do a video on this for quite some time. 24 minutes, almost 25 minutes into it.
This is Justin Williams Savoy. Thank you so much for joining me, subscribers, old and new. And I look forward to providing new content for you very, very soon. Peace.